Hello, we're going to do drawing six, a truncated cone. This one here is on a 45 degree, so the lateral. Um, it's going to be similar-ish to the drawing five that we've just done, except for the major thing is these element lines are obviously on a slope on a 45. So that's going to change the view from this would, as the view's orthographic drawing right now, this would be front and this is side. That's just the orientation of this right now, so this would be known as front. So the front view looking down the cylinder, you're going to be looking at an elliptical shape here. So your eyes would be looking through here in this shape right here. So we have to transpose all those over to the other side. Also, this is sloping. So as this swings over, this will still be at the same height. So this rectangle here is a circle. So you can see this circle here. Uh, we got a 55 radius, so we're 110 for the diameter of that. We're 150 here, plus we have some heights and a 45. So let's double check to see what's happening over here at the drawing. So over here, I have brought this up so we can allow enough room to put a, pat, a hole pattern down below. So for this one here, we have gone 65 millimeters up just to allow a hole pattern to fit right there. And we're below the top here. Uh, 20 mils or so, so we allow enough to get a pattern up here. We are 10 mil from the edge for this cylinder here. We're 50 mil in between our projects, or views I should say. So we have enough room to come up here with a pattern. Probably could have put those a little closer, but that's all right. Our cone here is 80 at the base. We're 200 for the height or for the length here, I guess it would also be the height if it was swung up. We're 150, 110, and just double check the 110. The biggest thing is just having mistakes. You don't want to have that. Okay, I think we've double checked all the dimensions and we're ready to go. So to start this one, there is a how to, that you can look to see how accurately you can place all these. Plus there's the patterns at the end as well. So for this one here, we have to do a little half moon off the side just so we can get our, all our element lines on here. So that's the first thing we're going to do is get our element lines. We'll bring those over. We'll get a shape on the top and we'll do our, pa our cone pattern first. Let's just divide these up as usual. those up to the base. Make sure your pencil's sharp on this one because the lines are going to get fine. Send spin your pencil as you're drawing your line. That'll help to maintain the sharpness. These will be the widths over here at these height locations. So this would be the bottom would be here. The next element line will be here. And we'll number these element lines here eventually. Let's just bring them all the way across the other side. And I'll have to add more construction lines in later. Center line is already done, and the width here being 40, it's also 40 here, so this is the 40 here. We 
We can always number these. One, two, three, four, generally on center. Five, six, seven's at the top. So over here, we're one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we gotta take the widths at these locations. So three and five will be the same. About 35. So for three, 35. We'll, we'll do this on both sides. You don't have to, one side will do. This is not off center. That would be the next hardest thing is if this was off center the one way, then we're really gonna get some differences. So that would be uh, quite a bit harder. We'll might do that one next year. Okay, now number two and number six here. Looking at about 20. We'll step, up, step off on either side. And same with number two. Okay, let's bring these up to the apex and where they cross the cylinder here is where they're going to shoot over here to the other side. Realistically, we just have to do the one side. And one, seven and one are there. So this, we, I think that's pretty self-explanatory there. Let's bring these element lines up to the top, to the apex. This cone is also truncated here, so that'll be the top of the cone. Apex up top, tip top, the peak. Okay, now we're ready to run across here. So the, some of these are going to be fairly close together. Let me go grab my other pencil, it's been sharpened. So number four here will be the lowest one. We'll bring these all the way over. I'm just going to bring them all the way over. It's going to be a little close up top. Two more to bring over there. Okay, let's connect the dots. So we know four was here. Let's go ahead and find, there's number five here. So where's number five? Number five. Oh, did we miss one? I guess we did, didn't we? We missed one there. Okay, better bring that up. Easily done. So we'll split one in between the 
those two, that bigger gap there. There we go. So let's go and look for five there. So it's a second line up, so five. We're gonna look for six. So six is up here. So six is the second line down. Not the top line, but this line. And then seven will be the top. Go ahead and do three. So three will be up here. Three and then up. Third line up. Oh, three will be there. Easily miss. So I missed that one there. So not that one. That's all right. Be a little higher than that anyway. Do number two. Number two is right on the top. So number two is all the way over here. And then number one is at the top. There. So I'll just try to fix my eraser mark there. So there we go. There's our shape of our cone. Okay, we're ready for a pattern. So my dividers are going to be just a little short. So I need to add on an extension. So with these extensions, these just pop off. Fits in there. And the little slot here fits in the bottom. Just like that. Use that way. The other thing you could do is a pair of dividers with a pencil and you can tape something onto it as well. A lot of times we end up doing a lot of taping of the pencils. I'm just going to use this one here. So I'm going to come off the, the number seven there. So on the sloping side, on the sloping side from the apex to the base, I'm going to arc that out. We do have to use that for our, our stretch out here for our arc length that we're going to be using. So for this one here, we have a 40 radius. We're going to have an 80. We're going to go 80 times pi. Two fifty one thirty three. Divide this by two. We're just going to do a half pattern for this one. So one twenty five sixty six. We're going to divide this into six for the individual arc length from the one to two or the two to three. Twenty one approximately. Okay, so from there, what we can do is the 125, so 126 there. We can measure that on the curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to come right off the number 7. We're going to measure out 126 on the curve. And this is only as accurate as your ruler or your measuring. Okay, and then we're going to measure 21 down. So we'll get our element lines on here. Again, this is just on the curve. So we're going to come 21, 21, and then 42, because we're going to double that. Now we're going to come up from the other way, because we always want to work to center. So 21. 
Yeah. And I'm always trying to measure from absolute when I can. So 42, we'll double that. 42, 21, 6, or, yeah, 63. Okay, there's all our element lines, so we can go ahead and put these on, and then we can find out where these intersect those lines. Again, we'll number these as well. Generally, we want to have the seam on the shortest side. So we're going to leave this as 7. We'll go for 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm going to take my extension off here. It's no longer needed. And we're going to take each one of these and populate them. So number six here, we'll go with six. So off the apex here, and all the way down to number six. Again, just as accurately as possible. It looks like it's a little shorter than seven. A little mark there. So six comes off. Oh. Hold on here. Slight little mistake. I can't measure off of there. Of course I can't. I need to project those to the outside edge. Okay, so that is not a true length coming down there. Everything's got to come off the sloping side. So let's bring all those out to the sloping side there. So use your 45. Bring those out. Good thing I caught my little mistake there. That would have been costly, time consuming. So everything always measures on the sloping side. So nothing ever comes in through this area here or off center. So everything in the cones always comes off the sloping side. There we go. So seven is down below. We got six, five, four. Oh, let's do that again. Six, five, four, three, two, and one is there. This one here will be just an arc off the top. Okay. Again, everything comes off the sloping side. So six there. Six was already pretty close already. Five, four, three, two more to go here, then we'll do the top. So everything comes off the sloping side. go and then we'll go ahead and do the top here okay. there we go there we'll snake that in I'm gonna use my pencil side of my snake Get off the number seven there 
try to join those as closely as possible. Is the hard part. Okay, there we go. Now we'll just identify. Again, this will just um, come off the grading guide. So just your name, your date. So we'll just put all this on here. So number four is the center line. So we'll just try to stay away from there. And just, everything goes in the pattern. That's gonna get cut out. Simple there, we'll just call this a con, and we'll call this one and six, and we'll do a half pattern. So just running out of room here a little bit. Okay, and from there. Uh, working through the list here, we got our center lines, bend lines. So we form this cone up to the full cone, and then we would cut out after. So we'll go form to 80 on this one. Here. We've got shear lines here. We got a shear line here. We got burn line there. This will then be a burn line. So we've got two burn lines. Shearing, we're gonna have a burn line here. So that top will get burnt off, shear, shear. We've got our quarter marks on here. We could measure across the top here to put a form direction there. And again, just uh, try to make everything as smooth as possible. No double lines, nothing woolly, nothing coarse. Okay, there's that one. And now we'll just go ahead and do the whole pattern down below here. So we do have pad our room here. Let's go ahead and drop these down. So these are going to be right off of these locations of the dots. So right where these little intersections are, the dots, this is where these will come down plumb off of there. So we'll start with number four here. And we'll just bring this all the way down to the bottom of the page. And we'll do this for each and every one. And we'll put a center line down below as well to divide the space in half down below. So what we're going to do is we'll divide our space in half. So we got about 65 there. So 32, 30, 32 and a half. We'll put our center line and then we can measure off the center line. Okay, so the hard part here, so number two, this one's two, we got three here, we got six, so there's six, that's three, and 
five here. Four is on the outside. So we're going to have to measure along this curve here to identify out here. So one and seven are already done out here. So maybe we'll start with the widest one, number four, and we'll try to get a distance off of there. So really hard to measure, but try to be as accurately as possible. And try to get the full curve in there as well. So it looks like we're about 28, 29 location. So on the curve here from the center to number four, I measured about 28 to 29. So off a of center here, about 28 and a half. I'm going to indicate a little mark there for that. And then measuring off center. The mark there for that. Okay. It'll be number five, the next one, which if I look at this, it looks like it's about a mil and a half different. Number five here, about 27. Again, we can almost number these over here. This is one, two, three, so maybe we should number these. One, two, Seven, just so we know where we are. We're on number five there. So I've measured about 27 on that one. Maybe number six, and then we'll do the other side. So about 15 for that one. Pretty small drawings. They're they're hard to measure. So 15 and 15. Number three over here. Going back out. Doesn't really matter the order you go in. 21. So 42. And number two up top here. I got about 10, 10 and a half. Okay, there's the whole pattern that does wrap on here at the top. So if you took this piece of paper, it would wrap over top of there. Okay, let's go ahead and sneak this in. This is the hard part here, as always. Start with the tighter location down over here. That's probably the hardest spot. Got to fair those lines in. So I'll just do the end in here first. work our way around. It's not so bad over here.
Okay, well, looks pretty good. It's always hard. So obviously this is our center line. We've got our quarter marks here. We've got our quarter marks over here as well. Put our name on here. Eight. I'll have to write small on this one. Full pattern. This is a full pattern. Oh, no, sorry, just put the drawing in here. Drawing six. Six. This one will be a full pattern here. We can form that up. It's obviously going to be a template there, but the form would be form two one ten in this direction. Then that fits there, so you know where that's going to land in that location. Also, the center line is going to land on the center line at the top right here, so that's where that lands. So. Um, coming from here so some people get confused and put it over here where the center line of this cone crosses over here at the top but making sure that you actually come right off the center here bring that straight up so that's with that pattern right there okay and again you can double check that with all the patterns stick it up to the window let's see how that fits there okay Good, there's a truncated cone number six just on the lateral on the 45. Okay, very good, thank you.